Hey guys, so today's movie I'm discussing on the channel is the latest work from M. Night Shyamalan called A Knock at the Cabin. Maybe it's just Knock at the Cabin, no A Knock at the Cabin. Knock at the Cabin, <laughs> so, which is based off the book called Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay. The film is set in a quintessential horror location, a remote cabin in the woods. Couple Eric and Andrew, who are played by Jonathan Groff and Ben Aldridge, have taken a trip there with their adopted daughter Wen, played by Kristen Sui. The three of them are then ambushed by four strangers who show up on their doorstep. They break in and take the three of them hostage and present to them an impossible choice. I won't say what the choice is because of spoilers, but if the family fails to follow through on this impossible choice, then it will bring about the apocalypse. So the film is a thrilling, high stakes, claustrophobic chamber piece, which for the most I did enjoy. I do have some conflicting feelings about the film overall, but I'll jump into that later. The thing with M. Night Shyamalan movies is that I'm more often than not disappointed by his films, but at the same time, I still do have a lot of respect for the man as a filmmaker because he is always swinging for the fences with his movies. He's usually taking risks that other filmmakers wouldn't dare try, and at least he's given the money and the opportunities to take risks, even though they don't always pay off. And for me, A Knock at the Cabin wasn't like a slam dunk like The Sixth Sense was, but it's also not a travesty like After Earth or The Last Airbender. For me, it falls somewhere in the middle, some somewhere where I'm entertained, but just not blown away by it. Kind of like his movie Split. That was an okay movie, but it was really elevated for me because of the quality of the acting. And I can say the same thing about Knock at the Cabin, because Dave Bautista in this was phenomenal. That was definitely a positive for me for a Knock at the Cabin, that the performances all around were great. In fact, the performances, is what made the movie really enjoyable, but the standout performance by far is Dave Bautista as Leonard. He's a complicated character, but Dave Bautista brings a surprising amount of depth to the character. There's so many layers to him, and I gotta say, it's really refreshing to see Dave Bautista given material like this, like leading man material. Like, he's not the comic relief or a henchman. Like, he really carries this film, and I would love to see him take on more leading man roles in the future. You'll see sides of Dave Bautista that you probably haven't seen him do before in Knock at the Cabin. Excellent work from him. But yeah, Jonathan Groff, Ben Aldred, Kristen Sui, Nikki Amuka Bird, they're all great in this. The only character I would have liked a little bit more from was Rupert Grint as Redmond. Out of the four horsemen of the apocalypse, he was the only one I found to be a little bit one note. The others had some dimensions. But let's see, what else did I like? Well, the atmosphere in this film is fantastic. To say this is like a horror thriller, it did feel quite tense, and that's saying something because most of the actual scary stuff is shot in the harsh light of day. The camera work, the set design, the sound, the score, even the visual effects, all of that was really good. But where the film came up a little bit short was it never really felt like it landed on what it was that it was trying to say. Now granted, I haven't read the book, so for all I know, M. Night Shyamalan might have hit the thematic nail on the head, but as a movie, I kind of wanted more depth from it. At one point towards the end, I actually thought it was trying to say something quite smart and interesting about gay people and our complex relationship and history with religion and spirituality and faith. The film grazes upon something kind of interesting, but never fully capitalizes on the idea. Ultimately, it just feels like squandered potential because we don't see a lot of mainstream movies explore the intersection of religion and homosexuality. So yeah, it just feels like a missed opportunity. It's also a film that plays things a little bit safe. The home invasion scene I thought was quite good, but the violence that occurs is mostly suggested or done slightly off screen. And it's funny that the film has a lot revolving around religion and yet has very little to say about it. There's so much religion in the plot, but it never feels like Shyamalan is commenting on it or criticizing it. Maybe he didn't want to rock the boat, maybe he didn't want to piss off his audience because he knows that religion is a sensitive topic, or maybe he just wanted his film to make money. But what you get is a movie which feels like it's walking on eggshells around what is arguably one of its most central themes. There's a real lack of risk in this film, which isn't something I often say about an M. Night Shyamalan film, which is why I'm a little bit conflicted on this movie. People will probably be asking in the comment section, is there a big twist? What's the big twist? It's an M. Night Shyamalan film, there's gotta be a twist. But besides the reveal of the choice that the family has to make, 
There isn't too many gaggy moments in the movie. Like, I've, for the most, I found it quite predictable. But because it's M. Night Shyamalan, part of me is happy to see him hold back a little bit and not just have a twist for the sake of having a twist. Yeah, this is why I'm conflicted, because I can't have it both ways, because on the one hand, I'm happy to see him dial it back a bit and do like a more self-contained thriller. But at the same time, like, well, for M. Night Shyamalan, this feels a bit too safe and a bit vanilla. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> I just can't be pleased. <laughs> so let's ask them three questions. Firstly, would I watch it again? Sure, uh, kind of like Split. It's one of those movies where I don't feel the need to, you know, buy a copy and add to the collection, but I could happily sit and watch it again just because of how good the central performance is in it. So yeah, I would watch this again for Dave Bautista's performance. Question two, do I recommend it for you guys? I'm gonna say yes. As far as M. Night Shyamalan movies go, this one is very watchable. It's not perfect, but there was no moment while I was watching it where I was bored. There's also a horror that's not heavy on the blood or violence, so, if you're not really a fan of that stuff and you fancy like a thrilling movie, then you probably could sit through this without like being too disturbed. And third question, what score to give out of 10? Great atmosphere, great performances. I don't think it fully grasped what it was that it was trying to say. And I did think it was a little safe and predictable, but I did still enjoy this film. So I'm gonna give a knock at the cabin a 5.5 .5 out of 10. But as always guys, it's just one bloke's opinion. What do you think of this film? What do you have to say? Let your voice be in that comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, hit the little like button for me if you want more movie, TV, and Oscars rate content. Don't forget to click subscribe. And if you wanna follow me on any of my socials, Twitter, Instagram, Loudbox, TikTok, it's all in that video description down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. For more things related to movies, TV, the Oscars, and popcorn culture. I'm Luke Kierfield, and I'll see you next time.